Okay, so in this video we're gonna talk about the fruitarian cult. A cult being, how do we define a cult? Like a, like a leader. Yeah, there's a leader. Know, and they're super dogmatic. Super dogmatic. Lots of rules. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, suicide. Suicide. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Come on. So I've had some people talk about maybe, maybe not fruitarianism as a cult, but Robinism, do you think that would be a... Like, yeah, no, I mean, definitely it's not a cult because you can you can just decide to be a raw vegan and mm. you don't have to follow any of the rules that, that other people mm. you know, it's but there is a lot of people within the raw vegan community that are very dogmatic and judgmental and they think things need to be done a certain way in their opinion and mm. so there is cult like aspects to the community of Britannians <laughs> yeah. and the community of raw vegans yeah that's a good way to put it I would right. even say with, with regular vegans there's a lot of Cult like aspects to that mm, community. Right, yeah. right. What about the diet being a fad? Do you see fraternism as a fad or the fraternity diet as a fad or is it like a legit diet that has its. I think sort of for some people it may be, but that doesn't mean that the diet itself is a fad. Mm. For some people, they might come across it, it might be a phase in their life, they get involved in it, and then it just comes out of their life right. you know? like they just get bored of it or they can't handle it or it's just not accessible for them and then it just turns out it was just a phase but right but the diet itself doesn't have to be just a fad right you know? right i mean there's so many different diets nowadays mm -hmm. yeah. and you know diets like a vegetarian diet or a vegan diet are considered more legit diets but mm -hmm. things like maybe sometimes a uh, paleo diet is or considered a fad Atkins. or the atkins which yeah, is you know definitely much fade, more yeah specific mm -hmm. so that's why sometimes people say when well, no, a fraternity diet yeah. is a fad but it, it's, it's pretty it's, legitimate right it's because important too because like when you talk about veganism or fruitarianism it's like not just a diet it's sort of like an ethical stance or a lifestyle yeah which is usually less of a fad type of thing than a diet right right, right. so so i guess the conclusion would be that the fraternity diet is you know, it's not held by a cult in any way, right. but it may have some dogmatic uh, yeah. sides of it or people that approach it in a dogmatic way. Yeah. And it's not intrinsically a fad, but for some people it may feel right. like a fad because they sort of face in and out. Yeah. I think part of the reason why people have that idea maybe is the raw tell four cult type. Mm. So that's yeah, a cult. I think that was, till four. Well, people call it a cult. It was, you know, during Ryder and Freely mm. came Did up with, start the, it? with the diet plan. Wow. Yeah, okay. The official raw tell four diet plan. Okay. And, you know, you have to calorie smash. You can eat raw after, or you can eat raw till four. And then after that, you can eat a cooked meal, but only with greens and absolutely no salt and no oil and blah, blah, blah. Mm. they have all these rules you know and there was a lot of followers and they just blindly listened to whatever wow. they said and followed the plan and they exiled each other if they weren't like i've seen i've seen a lot of content about people being really like brutal on each other about, wow. about raw till four you know what about the 80 10 10 from doug graham is that a cult because i mean he he started <laughs> well i mean i wouldn't call it a cult but there's definitely a lot of dogmatic people who mm. think if you have to be if you're a raw vegan it has to be 80 10 10 right and that's the only way to do it whereas there's there's tons of just options 80, 10, but no salt yeah no like salt that. no fermented food none right. of this none of that like so on the yeah. dogmatic side of mm -hmm. things yeah, lots of rules involved with 80-10-10 right. sure, that don't so, necessarily have to be followed. So how would you approach, let's say, fraternism in a way that is not a fat and is not a cult? I like I like Mango Mango's approach. Mango Woodsack. Yeah, he's Mango Woodsack. He's got a good approach to fraternism. Yeah. For what's sure. what's his approach? Uh, I think he just thinks you know fruits equal, fruit is harmless, fruit is good. Everybody should just be peaceful and mind their own business and eat fruit and cause as least amount of harm mm. as possible. You know. Is he dogmatic, Mango, or not quite? I guess you could argue he is about, you know, being sympathetic towards plants and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. You know, but he's pretty, I find him to be very gentle in, yeah. his, in his approach and uh, very gentle and, you know, he uh, he's, he's a little more strict with the vegan. Mm -hmm. With the vegan thing, he's like, you know, you gotta be vegan uh -huh. because it's so clear. With the, with the fruitarian thing and harming plants, he has more of a point and more of like a utopic ethical stance but he's not so strict about it he yeah. doesn't he doesn't have that much of an anger uh, towards people that eat plants yeah i feel like he realizes that that veganism has to be more accepted and and more 
well understood before people can kind of transition and move up to like fruitarian ideas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So even though he talks about fraternism, he still has a lot of emphasis on veganism mm-hmm. first. Yeah, I think veganism is more his priority. Right on. For sure. Cool. Thanks, Jake. Thanks for now. <laughs>